So let's have a look what API we will be creating. We will have an API for comedy events. So a main class will be an event. And each event will belong to a specific venue where the event will take place. And of course, each event will feature several comedians and each comedian will have a specific performance that belongs to this specific event. So basically think of it as a stand-up comedy night. And we will allow several get requests. For example, for our events, we will allow to get all events as well as a single event by ID. Additionally, we will allow to search event by date. So the user will specify a search query inside the URI and we will return the specific events for that date. We will also allow additional optional parameters in the URI that will include all gigs if set to true by the user. In that case, we will return all the events as well as all the gigs that belong to this event. For the gigs API request calls, we will have two searches, one by event and one by venue. So the user can specify the event for which he or she wants the gigs. And similarly, he or she can specify inside the URI what venue the gigs should be for. And additionally, we will be able to return a single gig by ID. Just like for the events, we will have an optional parameter that will allow to also include the comedians if the user decides so. So in that case, we will return all the gigs as well as each comedian for whom the gigs belong to. The comedians API will be fairly simple. We will allow to receive all comedians as well as a single comedian by ID. And we will allow one search query for the comedians by event. In this case, we won't need any optional parameters. And for the venues, we won't have any get requests, simply because it would be very similar to all the comedians, events, or gigs requests that we already would code it. Of course, it wouldn't be a very good API if we did not allow to create, update, and delete records in our database. So we will allow to create, update, and delete event, gig, and comedian, as well as the venue. Now, since these methods will be very similar, we'll utilize generic methods and we will have simply one method to create, one to put, and one to delete an entity. And this method will be able to process either of the four classes that we will pass into it. Of course, everything will be stored in a database, so we will have to take care of the relationships between the entities. We will have one event that belongs to one venue, but one venue can have many events. And similarly, one gig belongs to just one comedian, but comedian can have many gigs. And of course, one event can feature many gigs as well. But a single gig can belong only to one event. So these relationships are important because this is how we will have to set up our models in order to have the entity framework utilize this relationship and create them for us in the database. And with these relationships in place, there will be some constraints. For example, when we create or update an event, we must assign a venue to it. We cannot have an event without a venue. And similarly, when we create or update a gig, every gig belongs to a comedian. So we have to have a comedian for that specific gig. However, the comedian and venue can be created or updated freely. There will be no constraints. And similarly, when deleting entities, we have certain constraints. We can delete an event or gig with no problem. However, we cannot delete a comedian if there is any gig that belongs to this comedian. And similarly, we cannot delete a venue if there is an event that this venue belongs to. And finally, we will be utilizing data transfer objects. So our get request will return DTO classes instead of the actual entities. This is a very common way to process get requests because it allows us to select properties from each class that we actually want to return. However, to keep the track between the DTOs and our original entities, we will use automapper to map 
these two classes together. So when we create, update and delete an entity, we need the full entity to be saved in a database. So in this case, we will map the DTO class to the full entity, unlike when we do the get request, where we will map the full entity to the DTO class. So we will map these classes in both directions. So this is a fairly simple but very practical API that we will be creating. So now let's start coding.